The Bohr model of the atom, developed in the early 20th century, was an attempt to explain observations about the way atoms and electrons absorb, retain, and release energy. The model assumes that the atom has a structure similar to that of the solar system, with the nucleus at the center and, at, and the atom's electrons moving in circular orbits similar to the way planets orbit the sun. The Bohr model represented a great advancement in the understanding of atomic structure and contributed to the development of quantum mechanics. The Bohr atom is popular as a teaching tool because it helps visualize the relationship between energy, electron position, and the emission of electromagnetic energy. However, it is important to understand that the planet-like imagery is just a representation. The planetary model is not consistent with modern observations of the relationship between the nucleus of an atom and the electrons associated with that atom. Exploration of the Bohr model of the atom contributed to the development of a framework for understanding how electrons absorb and release discrete amounts, or quanta, of energy by suggesting that electrons associated with an atom do not have free range to be anywhere around the atom. Rather, electrons maintain discrete positions around the nucleus. In the Bohr atom, electrons travel in circular paths around the nucleus of an atom. Electrons can exist only in a finite number of orbitals. Each orbital is, a, is at a different distance from the nucleus. Electrons in each orbital contain a set quantity of energy. As long as the electron remains in the same orbital, the energy content of that electron remains constant. Electrons can move between orbitals by releasing or absorbing energy. The lowest energy level an electron can occupy is called the ground state. The higher orbitals represent higher excitation states. The higher the excitation state, the more energy the electron contains. When an electron absorbs energy, it jumps to a higher orbital. An electron in an excited state can release energy and fall to a lower state. When it does, the electron releases a photon of electromagnetic energy. The energy contained in that photon corresponds to the difference between the two states the electron moves between. When the electron returns to the ground state, it can no longer release energy, but can absorb quanta of energy and move up to excitation states. The number of movements an electron can make depend upon the number of excitation states available. In the case of a ground state plus one excitation state, there is only one possible state change. The electron can absorb one quantum of energy and jump up to the excited state. From the excitation state, the electron can then drop back down, releasing a photon with a predictable amount of energy in the process. The addition of a second excitation state increases the number of moves possible from one to three. One associated with the movement between the ground state and the lower excitation state, and two associated with movements between the ground state and the second excitation state. The number of possible moves increases as the number of excitation states increase as an arithmetic series. With four excitation states, the number of state changes is 10, which is four plus three plus two plus one. The Bohr representation of the atom also makes it possible to visualize movements of electrons from particular states. In a Bohr atom with six excitation states, an electron can jump from the ground state up to any one of those six states. An electron in the fifth excitation state can absorb energy and jump up to the highest excitation state or fall to any one of the five lower energy states, releasing a photon in the process. It is important to remember that the Bohr atom is not an accurate representation of atomic structure. However, this model helps illustrate some basic concepts of energy, absorption, and release by atoms and their electrons.